As I'm out looking over the trees, I see the wind blowing, you know, and that encourages me. As an introduction, I guess I should explain who I am, what we're doing, why we're here, and where we're going, and <laughs> why should anybody in their right mind watch a video by me, you know? Good question. <laughs> why are you? <laughs> Well, bluntly, when I was laying in the bathtub, talking to God, as I always do when I'm just laying back and soaking in the nice hot water all the way up to my neck and I'm just oh, relaxed, God talks to me. <laughs> just can't seem to get away from him, but oh well, that's the way it is with the Lord mine. You know, he tends to invade my quiet time when I want to just relax and not hear anything in the bathtub. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of like lay back and then I'll kind of sink underwater so that the water's over my ears and then I can't hear nothing except I'm in an apartment. So if you know anything about how sound carries, it goes through uh, objects faster and better than it does through air. So sometimes I can hear kind of weird things, you know, going on downstairs. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but anyways, the point being, actually, it's just pipes rattling. But God spoke to me, and you know, he's been reminding me that though I am doing ministry and sharing in devotionals and things like that and have many networks and many things going on on the Internet, that I haven't been doing my personal time with him as much as I should. You know, okay, maybe I've been skimping and, you know, fast shuffling and running out in a hurry to get things done and trying to accomplish so much because, after all, we got to save the world. <laughs> but why, why open Bible? Why this? Why, why am I starting a simple read? Because I'm not reading my Bible. Boy, that's unexpected. <laughs> I'll bet you didn't expect that, did you? Well, I'm like you, you see. I have a tendency to tell everyone what to do and not do what I tell them to do. My wife is famous for that, you see. I. Uh, oh, by the way, this is my wife, in case you don't know who she is. She's a great picture. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> There's a real person behind that picture. But... Um, my wife was unsaved when I married her. And as she got to know me and typical of God, I couldn't leave it that way. So guess what? <laughs> she got saved. <laughs> well, I wanted her to develop her own personal relationship with God. So as she began to get to know Jesus in a personal way, I didn't want her living in my shadow or being influenced by me, you know, as much as the character as I am. So I gave her and provided the environment for her to grow as a Christian. And one of the things that I taught her was to read her Bible every day. And that I challenged her to read it through from cover to cover, you know, from beginning to end. And she did. <laughs> she would go out in the morning about where I am, you know. And in the years that we were married, I'd watch her and... I'd be amazed because she was actually reading her Bible. Now, I've read my Bible through, and I've studied with different pastors at different times, like Chuck Smith. I've been through the Bible series when I worked at Calvary Costa Mesa way back when, in the old days, the tape learning library. I actually went through all the studies from Genesis to Revelation with Chuck. <laughs> you know, when you work there, and you're kind of like there seven days a week, which I was at that time, you know, I, yeah, I got a chance to really be intense, you know, and, some intense study. But uh, my wife, you know, read every morning. And though she didn't completely get it all, you know, she read it through once. Now she's through her second time. I think she's going through her second time. It might be her third. But um, the point being is she read it, you know, and she's faithful to it. 
But then me as an older Christian, I've been a born again Christian for 35 years now. And, uh, okay, maybe longer than 35 years. It's been a long time. <laughs> Since 74, you know. But, um, when I got saved in the Jesus movement, you know, I was out at Calvary Riverside and became harvest later. And, uh, Greg was still kind of like, you know, chomping at the bit, you know, to become an evangelist one day, you know, and he was getting there. And, uh, I got saved and, you know, at a concert, but then eventually wound up at Costa Mesa instead of Riverside. Because in those days, it was kind of like too far for me to go, but I wound up moving into my station wagon and Orange County and State Parks for, oh, I don't know, a couple of months living in my car, just so I could be near Calvary and study and learn from the Lord. And uh, eventually moved in with some Christian roommates, thank God. <laughs> I'm sure getting run off by the police in Orange County was getting a little old. But in those days, it was a whole different world. But the reason why we're reading the Bible is because nowadays there's so many people teaching the Bible. You know, we want to go through the Bible and just read it for what it is, a simple read. Just want to open it up, want to look at it, see what it says, not add to it, not take from it. But just simply read it, even as easily as we're talking right now. As though, God, we're talking to you. Like, you know, if I just flip open a page, you know, like in Genesis. Oh, I don't know. Genesis 1, 1. Who knows? That might be a good place to start. Genesis 1, 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Then we go to 1-2 and it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now you see, here's where the difference is between a Bible read and discussion and a Bible teaching and discussion. What we're going to do is just read it. We're not going to get into things like the gap theory and the gap idea between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2 because while we may know about it from our theology and someone telling us, is that what the Bible says? No, of course not. It's not what the read is. You had to have done something else in order to get to that conclusion. So that's good for you in a Bible study. But in a Bible read, we just want to read it. We want to let God speak whatever he's going to say in it. In the beginning, God. Yeah. What beginning? The beginning. Oh, so we might go into each part of it, just simply say, hey, look, this is in the beginning, you know, to kind of like reinforce it but not add to it what we know from theology or what we know from some other studying of it. No, we want to just read it. So if you're kind of simple-minded, you know, and you're not really like into getting into some real deep theological things, you know, and you don't want to go way off into tangents and play off in left field, right field, center field, and you know, try to hit a home run, then this is for you. This is just me getting down to the nitty-gritty of doing what God said, which was to read my Bible. And this is just like the original one that I had, although it was leather-bound. And there's no reason why I picked the King James. You know, whatever Bible you got is the one you got. You can read it and follow along. You don't follow along, hey, you know, read what you got. Because, you see, it really doesn't matter what Bible you got. And somebody told me, Oh, yeah, well, you know, if you got one of those tendentious translations like the Jehovah's Witnesses, you're going to get all confused. And I thought, well, frankly, you know, anything that anybody hands me, you know, any Bible I can read from, usually, and find something that God is going to speak to them about. Because it's God speaking. It's not me speaking. I mean, literally. Come on, let's get real. If God can't handle it, what are we doing here? <laughs> so... This whole study about, or this whole introduction about who I am, what I am, what we're doing, is just simply, I'm me and I'm reading a Bible and we're going to talk about it, just what it says as it says it, you know, and just sharing it, you know, not, not really trying to add anything or be super smart or super intellectual about it, you know, it's just, it's just a Bible, you know, and if God uses it, he'll use it for you. If he doesn't, you won't get anything out of it. But you will have fulfilled something he promised he would do. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if somehow just 
reading it with me or reading it in the text part where we put it and kind of make the same comments maybe. Who knows however I write it. But um, if you go through it, hey, if nothing else, you could say you've done it. You know what it says. Because a lot of times in books, people say they've read, read it, but did they read it? Good question. One thing you'll know by the end of this, you read it. There's no doubt about that. Because just like in the beginning when it says Genesis 1-1, you know, we'll, we'll kind of look at it. Although, you know, some of these numbers and chapters are added. You know that, right? It's not really in the original text, all that stuff. So don't got to worry about that. But, you know, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, it doesn't say in the beginning, God. <laughs> it says... <laughs> See how it, people get carried away when they're, like, teaching it? Like, if they're teaching it, they can go, in the beginning. Or they can go, in the beginning, God. Or they can go, in the beginning, God's created. Oh, and they go into the Bara thing and all the other time. That's good for Bible studies. But if you're just reading it, can't we just read it? <laughs> That's what I think. I think it's a whole lot easier to understand if you don't add to it. And you don't take from it, but you let God lead it, you know, the way he wants to go. It's kind of easier that way. That way, I don't have to take responsibility for what you're hearing. And you don't have to send me emails or write all these things, whatever, on the internet about, ooh, they're, you know, interpreting it. <laughs> I don't think so. I think it just says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. See how simple that is? And that's what we're going to do in... Open Bible. It's just opening a Bible. That's all. It's not going to get weird. You know, it's not going to get crazy. It's not going to get bizarro. You know, it's not going to be wacky khakis or Fruit Loops or Frosted Flakes. It's just going to be simply reading because I really do need to read my Bible more. And frankly, I think you can help me do it. You know, and the fact that I get a chance to go through the Bible reading it and reading it as it is seems like a good thing to do. Maybe you've never done it. And maybe this is for you. Because if it's not, don't watch. <laughs> but go read it somewhere and go study it. Yeah, studying is always good. I love going to Bible studies. I used to go to them seven days a week. But um, that's not what this is about. So if you need to, then go there. By the way, I'm reading this one, it just happens to be the King James, like I said. It just happens to be the Open Bible. There's no promo here. I'm not pushing buying a Open Bible or pushing buying King James because whatever God's got in your hands, he's going to use, frankly. And whatever you understand is probably what you're going to understand. So it might be simple if you get one to read along, but who cares? You know, if you don't, it's no problem. You know, just read what you got. <laughs> I think if in the beginning God created everything after that, God can handle it. <laughs> Don't you? So, in this introduction, we just want to take it one chapter at a time. You know, it's probably going to be a little challenging in some ways to do that for me. For you, it's pretty easy. All you got to do is watch. Maybe read if we got it, the video and the post. But I'm excited by it. Kind of kind of anticipating some wonder as kind of going, ooh, wonder what's going to happen when we get in the prophets. <laughs> or Deuteronomy. <laughs> ooh. Or into when Jesus talks. Ooh. The red letter edition. Ooh. <laughs> We're just going to read it. That's all. So come along for the journey and Enjoy it for what it is, because if you're not enjoying what you're doing with God, maybe God isn't in it, and you're not doing it right or something. You might want to talk to him about it. So, that's what we're about. That's what open Bible will be. Just that. Just an open Bible. We're reading it. And I like to laugh, so you might hear that once in a while, too. God bless you, whatever it is that you choose to do. But if you choose to come along for the ride, hey, wow, what a ride.